Welcome to today's edition of Daytime Dialogues. It's truly my pleasure to welcome one of the great teachers of Torah in our world Jewish community today, Rabbi Shalom Rosner. Rabbi Rosner is a graduate and a musmach of Yeshiva University. And until his Aliyah in 2008, he was a Magid Shir in the Beis Medrash program and also the Rav of Congregation Beis Ephraim Yitzchak, the island shul for six years. He is the founding Rav of Camp Cayley that we'll talk about a little bit later, an amazing program in New York that uh, takes care of kids from all backgrounds. And most importantly, he is also the Ram, uh, a Ram, one of the Rosh Hashivas at Yeshivat Karen Biyavna since uh, several years ago. He's been teaching in the Chutz Laretz program. And Rabbi Rosner, thank you for your time and thank you for all that you do. Thank you so much, Rabbi Tanki. It's, it's a pleasure to be with you and all of your listeners and uh, to be able to have a little schmooze. No, it, I'm looking forward to it because when I talk, mention to people that I'm having Rabbi Rosner join on today's Daytime Dialogues, they got all excited because whether you realize it or not, I think you're probably one of the most popular Dafyomi teachers in the world today. Uh, and it's a credit to how you teach and also to the opportunities that have been created because of technology. Yeah, um, I, I, just, I just try to uh, try to try to bring the Torah that's already there, try to do our part to the masses. The Torah speaks for itself. Just try to uh, be the conduit. So let me start. You're already in your third cycle. So this means it's been going on for about 16 years or so. What got you started teaching Dafyomi? Um, first, I was first, it started as learning Dafyomi. It was a uh, beginning of one year that I was, you know, it's actually my wife probably, but sometimes I would, I would see some Gemaras. I'm like, wow, this is an amazing Gemara. She's like, why don't you like see every Gemara? And, you know, she was, she, she kind of encouraged me because I kept like looking up various Gemaras that I've never seen in Krisos and Erechin or, uh, end of Erevin. So that's kind of like when it started. I actually started learning Masechus Krisos four cycles ago. That was the beginning because that was like towards the beginning of a of a of a school year. I had a I got a chavrusa uh, relating to uh, to that, and then towards the end of that cycle, um, happily some of the some of the members of my shul in uh, in Woodmere, where I was a rub at the time, suggested maybe you want to learn it with us. Um, but then some more people heard about it and said maybe you want to give a shear. And uh, that kind of put it in my mind. And I knew, which, which I think we all know, if you really want to know something or be Kony more, you have to teach it. And you have to, uh, to spread it because you're always uh, more prepared and um, feel the responsibility. So it started uh, there in uh, Woodmere. And uh, then Baruch Hashem, it has a life of its own. And you know, Baruch Hashem, it's, uh, it's really all siyat of the Shmaya. Again, you, you prepare um, the di different uh, ways of uh, preparation. But number one is to make it clear. Make it clear. Um, number two, make it interesting and fun. And uh, three, throw in as, as many uh, lambdas, halacha, machshava, whatever one can, one can bring in to, uh, to bring alive the daf. And when did you start using technology? In other words, be, um, be giving this year. Yeah, I, I'm not the most technologically advanced uh, person. I think I was one of, the, one of the last years that I gave in my college papers uh, handwritten um, you know, not, uh, not, uh, you know, I didn't graduate that long ago, 1993, 1993 was my, uh, IYU class. Um, but you know, it started at the time that other people from the shul were putting it online. Um, I wasn't really involved in that. It was just, uh, you know, other people that thought other recorded it for others. And then as the, as the internet grew, I think, and as, uh, as other technologies grew, it was kind of spread more, even now somebody What's at me this morning? There's a certain shear I've been supposed to be giving on the OU uh, a nach a nach shear for the past uh, number of years, about six six seven years. We're we're in Eov now, but somebody said they couldn't find Yeshayahu Perik So on the on the podcast, so I have no I, I know nothing about podcasts. I just know I, I could upload it to the OU website, and it was there. So I sent it to him from the OU website. I said I don't know what happens in space with moving it to podcasts, but you know Baruch Hashem, it's uh, it's a real schus to be able to share Torah with uh, with people. And, and using that, when have, have you had people reach out to you from unusual places with, with questions, with comments? What's the most unusual or the most gratifying? I've yes, Baruch Hashem, there's been uh, from all the different continents: Australia, Hawaii, um, you know, all different, uh, 
you know, uh, I think one, one of the one of those uh, Vietnam, Taiwan, one of those places where somebody was on a business trip and he said, I'm listening to you here. And in, in um, so Baruch Hashem from all different uh, continents. But Torah is everywhere. Torah is the ultimate unifier. And, um, you know, we just uh, we have to just use our, our generation as maybe you'll, we'll get to. Our generation is really one has the power with the click of a mouse to really ruin one's life. To, to click on one thing and go in one direction. But we also live in a generation where with a click of a mouse, one could get a sheer on any topic, in any language, on anything they want. So there's really no excuses for any of us to be able to, uh, to participate in the goodness that the technology gives us. Have you ever had a surprise by somebody who's listening to the sheer or a comment that someone, something that st stands out in your mind? Um, there's, there's Baruch Hashem, amazing, some, um, there's amazing stories, amazing stories, questions, comments. Um, I remember one time years ago, I was, uh, I was in Hershey Park with my family, uh, with some of the kids, and it started raining, and uh, we, we ran underneath some awning, because it was pouring out, and I'm with my kids, and I'm, I'm trying to calm them, and the strollers, and at, years ago, and then all of a sudden, Kasarni comes, Rabbi Rosner? I said, yeah, he says, oh, I recognize your voice, I wanted to say hello, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, you're recognized the voice with talking to my children, but you know, Baruch Hashem, things like that, people come come from all over, but it's really a schus to be able to try to be a, a shliach to uh, to share Torah. So you have Shirim up there on the Dafyomi. You're now in a cycle mentioned to me earlier on a, a, a cycle of Lamdas on the Dafyomi. You have Shirim and Nach. You have a Parsha Shir that's, that's widely distributed. Is there anything you ever wanted to teach that you haven't had a chance to teach yet um there's there's always the next the next stage but right now i'm in this stage there was before navi the actually the ou on the ou side it's uh, it's not as popular but it was a, a lot of fun to give i gave a safer mitzvah shir 613 shirim uh 20 minutes of mitzvah i think it's great for rabbanim you know it's great you want to speak between mich and Meyer if you have all the material there it's 614 because it's one introductory shir um, but again, we go through the Sefer Achinach and Mitzvahs, so that was really very, very, very special to give those shirim. But I've gotten, you know, people have asked me, Rambam or Mishnah Bura, Shulchan Arach, one at a time, we try to take one shir at a time, and Siyat uh, HaShemayah, Hashem should give all of us the koach to be able to continue. Um, I would love to give shirim on, on the Mesechtas that don't have uh, Gemara, the Mishnayas that don't have uh, Gemara, hopefully one day, uh, maybe Yerushalmi, who knows, but uh, take it day by day with the projects that we're in. You're, we're talking right now when you're in Camp Cayley. And Camp yeah, Cayley yeah. is uh, a camp with campers from all different abilities and disabilities who are in, fully integrated. And you, what, what's your role there? Yeah, so, so OHAL started this camp that we're in now since its inception, I think 10, 11 years ago. We've been involved in many different camps. This one is, uh, everyone has its own niche, but Camp Cayley is very special. It's a camp that is geared for uh, one month boys and one month girls, um, children and campers of all abilities. I Meaning in the same, many camps have, let's say a yachat bunk or a bunk in the camp that you know, is, uh, is designated. Camp Kaylee is, again, I don't know the exact percentages because a little bit, we're all on the spectrum somewhere. So it's hard sometimes to know, uh, but in the same bunk, um, there are typical kids and there are kids with with uh, varying levels of, uh, of abilities, whether it's Downs, whether it's Asperger's, whether it's uh, other um, undiagnosed uh, and just classic Camp Cayley campers as they're called. Uh, and they come back year to year and it's a place where everybody is included. Everyone is in the bunk together. There are activities that some will be more, let's say more the typical kids, there are league games, there's basketball, there's hockey, there's all the regular sports, but there's also a lot of other activities that if a camper is more comfortable in the art room, or ropes, or go-karts, or swimming, or boating. There's, there's, there's so much here. It's geared as a fun, amazing experience, but along with you know, a lot of uh, life learning that goes on. And um, you really see how the campers integrate and care about each other. Um, you know, Our kids have been through the system in Kaylee. Now we have a son who's a, who's a counselor to our, um, our campers. It's really, a, it's a very special place. And as a, a, a Rav Machana, or the so I'm, I'm the, the, the rubber the camp and then in charge of the Chinuch CF also. There's this 470 campers in camp this summer. And each boy gets two shirim a day. So there's about 12, 13 uh, members of the, on, on the Chinuch staff. 
also try to make sure that they'll organize and make sure everybody's in the right place at the right time. And the, the rabbinic duties, but it's 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 um it's wonderful. So you're giving the so you're giving shirim, you're organizing the shirim, you're overseeing the shirim. Are there interesting shilas that you get as the camp rabbi because of Kaylee being Kaylee? Um, I, I think a lot of them. Well, there's the regular area of kashras other shilas. It happens to be because it's the summer. There's a uh, three weeks, nine days shilas that uh, that come up, and especially because of our our um, community. Uh, that we are in Kaylee, especially during during the nine days, there's not as much. Uh, there's more of the of the typical, but uh, during the three weeks, there's um, there's a little more. I don't know if I would call it flexibility, but a little more uh, tzrachim in terms of m- much of the some of these campers. Just as an example, some of these campers live for concerts, like their whole simchas hachayim. You see them, some of these uh, the Down syndrome boys, or or any of them. They're just everyone. So there's a little more flexibility in terms of um, the simchas hamitzvah that we allow, um, you know, during the three weeks before the nine days than let's say a regular fully typical camp. Uh, but again, every shaila is separate and different. Um, but it's um, you know hilfa shabbos issues in terms of uh, certain boys. But again, those are you know obviously on the more extreme has and camp simcha types of shailas, they get that probably more routinely. But those come up in. Uh, in uh, in uh, Camp Kaylee, but it's uh, Baruch Hashem. It's a wonderful, I, wonderful, I, great place. You may have seen this last week. There was a shaila that Rabbi Shai Shachter asked Rev Ramon in Israel uh, from Camp Simcha about can, the costumes. Yeah, how about the costumes? Can a student, can one of the the, the madrichim come to davening in a costume which they wear the rest of the time? They don't have it, and the sensitivity, both in terms of the kind of shaila you have to deal with and the kind of answer that was given, was extraordinary. For those listening who haven't heard, the answer is yes, uh, in those unique kind of circumstances. So I assume those are the same kind of things with the concerts yeah. and other things that you have to deal yeah, with. And, and, and talking during davening and uh, in terms of helping them uh, along the way. I get emails from parents before, but also it, it's all different, let's say, besides the abilities, it's all different hashkafos, you know, that, that come to the, uh, the camp in terms of the staff, in terms of the campers. We have campers that don't really have such a Jewish education during the year. That come. We have some campers that um, that are involved in in um, you know during the year. They are in a special needs classroom, and here we try to integrate them into the regular chinuch rooms. So again, we try to you know include as much as possible. Um, but uh, definitely shilas that come up, and it's uh, we try to meet the, each situation as we can. So then, when I look at that hat, the camp rabbi hat, the magid shir hat, and now you're already for four years or five years you've been at Karen Biyavna as a full-time Rebbe in the B'nai Chutzlaritz program in the, for the, the American boys. Do they all fit? Do all these hats fit on or you have to, you're taking one off and flipping them back and forth? There's, it's, we try to, um, everything is part of, part of the one conglomerate of Bodhis Hashem. That's what we try to, uh, to do. But again, obviously there are, there are, um, you know, I try to be a father and a husband, uh, you know, uh, as well, that also is a very important hat, the first hat. Uh, but again, yeah, you try to fit it all in. And Baruch Hashem, it's really, uh, each one of them is a sfus. Uh, to being involved in the yeshiva, the yeshiva, they, they get the Talmidim are tremendous. They're, they're mechaivim. They're, uh, they're really guys who really want to take it to the next level. Um, the, the, the Talmidim in, in yeshiva, um, the, uh, the shul, Abba Shul and Beit Shemesh also. So, also, so all of these... All of these are, uh, but they all work together. They're all in Torah. They're all, uh, it's really a supposed to the, 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 all the positions are really rooted in um, trying to spread Torah, trying to bring, bring close people, people closer to Hashem. And it's really, I thank Hashem every day for uh, being able to, uh, to be in this position, to be able to be given the opportunities that my Rebbeim have taught me. Uh, really everything is, uh, is from them. And it's really to, to keep, keep trying to do what uh, Kaddish Baruch Hu's work. And you know each one is uh, is a is a avoda bifnei atzma, but they all connect. Now I don't know if this is going to be a fair question, and I'll explain why in a minute after I ask it. But how long did it used to take you to prepare the dafiomi that you put out there? And and the reason why I'm saying it's not fair is I still remember the conversation that Rav Shechter had during Corona. And they asked him, you know, how long did it take you to prepare for this? How were you able to come up with these answers? You spent, I've spent 80 years preparing for it. So it's not like you never looked at the daf before and it may be small, it may be long. If someone, you know, to try to appreciate the efforts in this, how long, 
the beginning of the previous cycle, would you spend on getting ready for a Dafyomi share? Okay, again, I, I am not somebody who has things at their fingertips in their head. I, I live, my life is preparation. That is everything I do, even just this, the conversation. That's why I emailed you yesterday. What are we going to talk about? I love being prepared. I love, uh, you know, every, uh, but it's, it's, it's hours. It's hours each day. Uh, again, there are some dafim that are, let's say, more familiar and, um, you know, more known and there's more, you know, known uh, classical material to, to mention and to talk about. And other times you have to, you know, some dafim are like, what am I going to leave out, right? And other dafim are, what am I going to talk about today? You know, so, so there, there are different worlds and there's different focuses. And, uh, and like I said, each year requires its own type of preparation. You know, dafyomi, I have my notes on the side of the Gemara and I, you know, look everything up. And uh, people make fun in the morning when I go give the daf every morning. I have a rolly, like an airplane rolly, which I bring this farm with. They're like, "Where are you traveling? <laughs> traveling through shots, you know." So you try to uh, try to go, but you know, there's different. Uh, a Shabbos afternoon shear in uh, in Beit Shemesh is a different type of preparation. Um, you know, shear in uh, Karen Biavid is a different type of preparation. But everyone, Rabbi Mayor Goldberg Shlita once told me many years ago, um, just think about your next year. What's your next year? That's prepared. Okay, go to the next one, one at a time, one at a time. Do and in that way, just keep 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 a level, keep it keep it uh, you know uh, focused and prepared. But I, I always, again, there are those maybe that that have it all in their mind already, and uh, it's just there. I, I need to prepare. I need to be uh, to know what I'm going to say. I was very inspired. I remember many years ago, I heard um, Rabbi Shapiro, who was the principal in Maimonides for many years when Rev Salvechik was there. He told me once that when um, that when the Rav came in to to give us a, a little Dvar Torah on a Friday to his second grade class. He took out an index card from his pocket. The Rav had prepared an index card for a second grade class. And that was a second grader class and the Rav. I, find, I found that little vignette very inspiring. But again, that's, you know, we, we prepare and prepare. Do you ever give a shear just to the microphone and not to people around you? Yes. You know, <laughs> in, uh, in camp, in camp, I give the Lumbus on the Daf shear, which is a 20 minute, you know, topical shear related to each Daf. That's what I'm doing this cycle. So nobody's there in the morning. I get that early in the morning. And generally the Navi shear, the Navi shear, I'm there generally uh, done in my house, when I have a, when I have a minute, uh, because there, there's a hierarchy. Those who have been following the Navi shear, you know, we did Navi for six years and now we're in the middle of Suvim, we're in the middle of Eov. So that's really when the Daf and the Chumash shear and the, the daily shear, the Navi shear is, I try to get in as much as I, I, as I can you know, Shabbos HaGadol, Shabbos Shuvah, you know, things come up throughout the year, you know, which makes it busier for, for uh, Rabbanim. But those year, I'm not given my study. Yeah, so, uh, you know, is it, is it harder to be excited and, and lively and uh, talking to yourself? I try to imagine, you know, different uh, audiences. And again, I try to uh, be exciting with, with the, obviously it's easier with an audience there, but uh, you try to uh, be excited and, um, you know, lively about the material, whoever you're speaking to. Let's go over, if it's okay, a little bit to talk about Karen Biavna, which is, you know, one of the great yeshivot in Israel. It's the first of the yeshivot in Akiva. Rav Goldvich Zatzal was the founding Rosh Hashiva, and now there's a, the next generation, maybe even the next next generation there. When how is how have the yeshiva experiences changed from when you were in yeshiva, when you went to Shalavim? Yeah. To, to the Karen Biyavna, it's not yeshiva specific. In general, how has it changed that I, I, I think a, a major chain has been a cell phone. I mean, that has tremendously affected the experience. I remember when I was in Eretz Yisrael for the year, I think I spoke to my parents once in the first two months, and then it was the Gulf War. That was my, uh, that was my Shana Aleph. Um, so there was, um, you know, um, a lot more talk then, but you know, students are much more connected to the outside world in our generation, which makes it much more challenging, I think. You know, it used to be you went to yeshiva and you were there to learn and you weren't even connected to your friends and other yeshivas as much. Once in a while, in Bein Osmanim, you would. But, uh, but really, it was, it was in a certain sense easier to focus and easier just to lose yourself in the yeshiva experience. Now, because there's so much connection to the family, but even not to the family, to the outside world, to news, um, it makes it much more challenging to help students focus. That's not only in Israel. That's that every school at every stage has that experience. Um, but um, but every generation, there's a, there's a beautiful thought. I forgot what Shundam Farshim say, that the Pasuk says in Baloscha, that every generation needs its own trumpets. 
need to show on chatzotros. And you can't use the previous generation's chatzotros. You had to make new ones. Because every generation needs its ways of, of inspiring the students. It needs its ways of inspiring the masses. And even 10 years ago's um, you know, excitement and ways of, of, of talking and communicating is different. But I think that that's one of the major challenges uh, today to get the guys to focus, to get the guys to be in the world of the yeshiva, even with their cell phone. So how do you do that? Like, what is the difference? What are you doing different to try to inspire them, to engage them, to bring them in? I think, I think maybe twofold. One is to make sure to try to limit, like when the guys are in the base matters, like leave your cell phone in the, in the, in the dorm room. Just number one, just to have less quantity time. Uh, but the other way is, I think, what we've been doing, what, every, what all Rabbanim have been doing all the years, and that is the more that the Talmidim grow from within, the more the Talmidim recognize the value of each moment and recognize wh what direction they want to ha have their life in. You know, from 18 to 23, these years are really going to determine a major direction in your life. So from within, they'll start making their own decisions in terms of, of how to use their phone, in terms of how to use their free time. Um, so that the second aspect has been what we've been doing when educators have been doing for, for generations, it's just has to take on a little different now, but, but it's with, with having the Talmudim grow from within, as they say, nowadays, I have, I have teenagers, I have high schoolers, I have post high school, I have children in medical school, I have various ages, um, or Hashem. Um, but really it's, um, we, we, we don't live in, again, the world that we're in, we're not in the world of rejection. We're in the world of channeling and, and, and trying to give values from within so that the, the children and the grandchildren you know, uh, can make these, these, these decisions and use their time and uh, connect to HaKadosh Baruch Hu with all the challenges that our generation has using the tools that our generation has. And in Caribbean, Yavna, it used to be, or once upon a time, it was the only place to go. But uh, that was before my time even. But then it used to be the place where the boys would go who weren't really looking to be with everybody else. You know, when you're next door to Givat Washington or the kibbutz and the wind goes the wrong way from the kibbutz, you know you're in Karen Biavna. Yeah. Uh, is that still the case? Have boys who are trying to get away a little bit, the ones who are coming? I, I think that's, you know, it's, um, it's, it's yes and no. I think um, everyone who was going to Yeshiva hopefully was looking to get away and to, and to grow. Uh, but I think Hevra is also a crucial element in our day and age. I think Talmidim coming, most Talmidim don't want to go without anybody. Um, you know, I think one of the greatest um, um, elements of yeshiva today are the, the, the people ask me, what, what, what do you like about yeshiva? I said, the Talmidim. I said, the guys are great. It's a great Hevra we get from all over. Not from America. We have 10 boys coming from, uh, from England next year also. Um, and it's really, uh, it's a great Hevra. It's, it's not, a, like you said, it's not a place when you come to Caribbean, everybody's going, so I'm going to go too. That's not really, people come to Caribbean because they're looking for excellence. They're looking for intensity of Talmud Torah, all in a warm and caring environment. I think the, the yeshiva knows what, you know, that this generation is not just about the mind, it's about the heart. It's about making sure there are Tal Rebbeim and Mashkichim and uh, people to talk to and people to care for you. And that's what our, our generation needs even more than, more than ever. You know, just uh, not not re just rebellion to to inspire you through a great lambdas, but rebellion to inspire you by being uh, connected to you, to schmooze with you, and uh, that's what Karen Biavin is is today as well in terms of uh, terms of that. So I think yes, it's not a place where even just the numbers wise, Karen Biavin is uh, is yeshiva that wants to keep the yeshiva has their Israeli feel. The Rashi yeshiva are very strong. They don't want it to become and known as an American yeshiva. I know my my own boys. They they went to Yerucham, which is a different <laughs> yeshiva down south. Uh, but maybe no, they don't want to go up, uh, to a place with the name uh, Rabbi Rosner was known. Um, but um, but in any case, they wouldn't like like think about it. If it's an American yeshiva, they're they're not as interested. So I think they want to keep the balance uh, in that. Um, but it's uh, it's a place to go with a few friends. Uh, but to know it's it's serious Talmud Torah, and it's a place to, to grow and take it to the next level. You know, there's uh, recently I was uh, contacted by someone who wants to create a year program in America, as opposed to coming to Israel. You may have been contacted by the same person even. But I I'm curious, do you think Israel, the year in Israel is still the same transformative year it was? 
or is it because of communications we can do it in upstate New York? Uh, I think it's um, I think it would be terrible not to be an Eric Israel. Um, it has a tremendous, tremendous impact. Um, you want to say even today it has an impact. Just look at what 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 boys and girls look like. You know, after they come back from a year or two in Eretz Israel, there's uh, the proof is in the is in the pudding. Proof is like uh, it's it still makes a tremendous impact. And there's no there's no substitute for being in the land of Israel. There's no substitute for for uh, spending time away, and not just away, six thousand miles away, or ten thousand, seven thousand miles away, or wherever one is coming from from their not just from family, from their environments, from what they're used to being in a different country, but not just different country, but being in Eretz Yisrael, you know, seeing the land, seeing, um, you know, the Makoma Sakadoshim being connected, um, you know, knowing, knowing where you are, there's, there's nothing like it. And uh, even if one is in a, in a yeshiva like Karen Biavna or yeshivas like it, where Tiulim is not the main focus of, of, uh, of our experience, it's Talmud Torah and the yeshiva, but through the Ben Azman and through the Shabbatones, this connection to Am Yisrael and Eretz Yisrael. And uh, there's no substituting for that. And there's no substituting for trying to give a certain value that Eretz Yisrael is the place, the real place of the Jewish future, past, present, and future, and to lay seeds that students know that this is where eventually, even if not now, now I'm going to go back to, you know, university or wherever I'm going to go, but this is the place where, you know, I know the Jewish people belong. You know, you can't get that in upstate New York. And, um, you know, that the issue, if somebody is saying there's an issue about tuition or I don't know what the motivation for starting such a program would be. So we have to we can work on other solutions for that for that issue. But to uh, to have a, a, um, a choice between learning for a, a year in a year in Israel, there's there's no there's no comparison. Now, I, I'm sure as a Hezda Yeshiva, it's uh, the, the Zionist feel is very, very strong at Karen Biafra. It's not, uh, but when some of the boys go to the American yeshivas, uh, not even within the modern Orthodox world that are purely American, you sometimes have that feeling though that uh, it's not as connected as they would be in a Kirbiyav, then a Shalavim, and a Gush, and on and on and on, the Hez yeshivas. Is there a way, if, if you were advising parents, would you tell parents if the child is able, pick the Dafka specifically, a Hez yeshiva? I, I think it really depends on uh, on the students. Um, you know, I before I came to Garbi and I taught in Rashid for ten years in uh, in Beit Shemesh, a wonderful institution, wonderful yeshiva. And I think every yeshiva is 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 great, and every student has has to find you know the the right shidduch. And um, you know, a place like um, you know a Rashid, which I again I was at for many years, and many other yeshivas, uh, there could be strong um, connection to Eretz Yisrael, even though it's not a Hezer yeshiva. And uh, I don't think one has to be. There, there are different yeshivas that that different hashkafas, and one has to research that for sure. Uh, and there are definitely yeshivas that give more of a connection to the land of Israel than others. That's true. Uh, I don't think it has to. There is a certain type of connection that you get in a Hezu yeshiva uh, when you know your uh, your um, you know your table mates in the base medrash are you know during Shana Bed are going to be going into the army when they know that um, they're a rebbe. I have. I have two boys. I have one who's starting to be an officer now uh, in the uh, in uh, in the paratroopers. When they know that it's real, they know that this is something that's uh, valuable. And um, and I could just tell you, just uh, as the, as that connection, there's there's no there's no prouder moment than to than to see you know your uh, your son you know guarding Eretz Yisrael you know at the at the Kotel when they get their gun in their Tanakh, which is not just fairy tale. It really happens. Um, it's really um, there's a, there's a there's a connection there. And a feeling there that is um, that is intangible, but again, different yeshivas give off different uh, feelings, and obviously the research has to be done beforehand. But uh, I'm not going to say you know Hezer yeshiva is better for everybody. You know, there's definitely a certain feeling given off from a Hezer yeshiva, and even within the Hezer yeshivas, there are different feelings um, and um, connections given off by each one has their own unique uh, niche. So, um, but uh, but in general, yeah, I think in general, even even if one is in a yeshiva that does not connect as much to Eretz Yisrael. Being in Eretz Yisrael still is uh, is something that is that is that is nothing like it. Rabbi Rasner, believe it or not, our time is up, uh, and I want to thank you. But before I let you go, I just have to let everyone else know that next week our guest on uh, Daytime Dialogues is going to be Israeli Ambassador Akiva Tor, 
Well, because he's in Korea, which is 14 hours difference, uh, we'll be recording it and then putting it up on Facebook and in the podcast as well. But next week, we'll be continuing with it as well. Rabbi Rosner, you're, I'm still in awe of all of the Torah you're teaching, all of the Torah that because of technology, you continue to teach your work at the camp, in the shul, in the yeshiva, and everywhere else. And I thank you so very much for joining us today. And I also want to let everyone know at KINS that Rabbi Rosner will also be joining us next year as one of our scholars in residence. So you'll have an opportunity to hear and to learn from him as well. Thank you so very, very much. And continued Hatzlocha in all of the things that you do. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Batanki, also, and continue with all, all your Avodah HaKodesh, both in Chicago and in America in general. And uh, we should be continue to team up uh, spreading Torah. Amen. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Sure.